Okay, so I uh, just went from the pin uh, here and went under it in the sockets to ground on the other side and it's no, 0.5 ohms which is the resistance of my wire so which means basically that pin is grounded where it should not or the socket is right. grounded where it should not. So, so we took our boards out, uh, our control board and our CRAM board and there was intense debate about uh, where it's, whether it's a valid combination and we think it's not. Here we have a, a control board uh, that is actually fitted with only one K of ROM. There are some empty things. And uh, with a switch chip, that's the PROM decoder that works for the 1K ROM, 1K RAM, and here's 1K of RAM. So, so far it's good, except they stuck the 1K decoder on a 2K board, which is actually a 3K board because it has the rework. Uh, so that's a no-no. Uh, this board cannot work uh, the way it's wired, cannot work neither with that decoder nor with that amount of RAM. So we're trying to label our board so we keep track of which is which here. We have, how many boards do we have? Eight. Eight boards. All right. So here you see an example of a 2K ROM board on a either a control board I work with, well that's just, uh, one that's been rewired for the 3K RAM uh, and the switch, switch, switch chip where you can tell what it is. Uh, we have a bunch of switch decoder chip and you can see there some for 1K, 2K and 3K configuration. Uh, here's, an, here's a 3K cram board. That would make our day. So we're uh, trying to jot down which are the, the available configurations. So there are three described in the manuals. The original 1K1, 1K RAM, that were with the SW1 uh, decoder chip. And you have a 2K ROM, 1K RAM, that works with the SW2. And a 1K ROM, 3K RAM, that works with the SW3. So this is infinitely complicated. And it turns out you cannot pull those ROM in any board either because they need a, a hardware rework. So there's not that many combination that will work and we definitely has one that is not legit. Number one would be to replace the original 1K. Does it say 1K on it? No, it doesn't say anything because it didn't have invented a 2K with the... Carl has the 3K over here. We should work with our reworked uh, control board, right? Oh, that's good news. So that's 1K ROM and 3K RAM, all right? Well, it's booted up, so let's see if it works or crashes. Okay, so, now? So okay. The same thing. Mark prints the directory. Matt test them. Yeah, Matt test. And then Matt, Matt test is the one that crashes. Okay. Well, it booted, it booted. That's, that's pretty good. A test dot something. You don't need to put the dot. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Whoa! Well, that's something it, different. It did something. Yeah. Source ROM is untested. Black characteristics, white characteristics. But it's aligned on the end. Let's look at the top there. It's telling us Let me capture this. Yeah, yeah, this is this is good. This is what it looks like on the simulator. Oh, all right. So it's it's yeah, working it's fine. Oh wow! So we actually we hit some keys. I don't know what. What's about happening? What's happening? It's doing some kind of test. I wonder if that's a mouse test. Ah, nobody thought. Oh, it rebooted. So the next logical step will be to replace our original uh, control board and change with one that's a known 
well, we don't know if it's good, but we suspect it's a good 3K board with the right connector. Yeah. Yes. There you go, you can do it. Well, this combination doesn't do it, huh? It's like... Try it again. Well, that combo doesn't do it. Oh, I forgot, sorry, I forgot the connector. Yeah. Okay. Power. Uh, Yes, we have the auto. Okay. Yes. Boots better with the connector installed, right? I recognize the seat. That's the nice thing about this generation of disc is you can tell what your program is by yeah. the yeah. That yeah. looks like it was faster or better, I think. Works. Uh, so, yeah, if you video the test running, that'd be useful so we can like single frame to see exactly where it fails. <laughs> oh, that test, eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything better? Do you say packet? Bad Ethernet packet? Zero pass the test, eh? No air summary. But the mouse is bizarre. A source room, a C source room, doesn't test it, but that's normal. Okay, yeah. yeah, so it's, go, it's going through the test, so that configuration works better. Right, so this, this is all, this is also one of the three, by the way. That's its um, the number of the coded Ethernet address. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Oh, so this 103rd machine of all photos. So it's well, this, well, this, this it's we're, get, dead, we're getting much better here. No, I think it's just it pa it around. keeps passing the tests here. And we it say it's zero pass system. I think that's for the memory, right? Or is that not? So I readjusted the screen, it should be a lot crisper. Well, they don't really like that. Yeah? <laughs> they're, they're not really very happy with people taking artifacts for restoration. Yeah, that's a nice one. So it looks like, except our mouse that's not made to connect to our keyboard, now we got it working fine. I'm trying draw. The great excitement of this, right? Yeah, and here we go. And we can't draw a thing because we don't have the mouse, but it's not crashing anymore. Yeah, the mouse now is there. Mm -hmm. The next step. You say blue jeans work. <laughs> so, yeah, what's but it, the there is no light coming out of it, there. right? So, uh, my, my guess is that. Good to look at it. So here's another instance of mismatch hardware. This is a DB19 with three rows. One row have been pulled out, and our mouse down there is a DB9. So they won't work. <laughs> so my my guess is this is not a, an Alto mouse. This this must be a, a Star mouse mouse from later. Okay. So, so you're going to Xerox Park later today? Yeah. Did Should I grab a mouse? mouse? <laughs> I have a flight for the mouse. <laughs> Those, I got a mouse that will work. Uh, this one has the three rows of pins with this weird connector, which is not a DB connector. It's uh, the pins are closer together. 
and uh, don't ask me where I got it. This one is a loan from Xerox Park, where I had a, a professional <laughs> visit today, and uh, they allowed me to borrow the mouse. Uh, from and you won't believe how that thing works. So I had to uh, open it up to see if it was uh, clean enough to work. And it has little wheels on the side. And the way it works is that there are four fingers on the wheels uh, with different lengths. So this is what generates the quadrature phase signal. I will have sort of that one. So it, it only works on this rubbery thing. It won't work on regular material like the other side of the pad, which is a regular mouse pad that doesn't work. Or on the the wood here, doesn't work either. It's a it, it's a metal ball, so it's extremely slippery. My boots. Oh yes, the mouse is mousing not very well, but I think you saw it move. Alright, try to. Ooh, it's going to be a painful mouse, but good enough. Alright. Alright, draw. Hey. So I had to anchor my mouse pad here to make it sort of work, this is so sticky. Illegal transformation parameters. There you go. Okay. Oh, I move from A to B. Here we go. So from here to there. So, well, I can't really tell you. I'm just trying user interfaces here. This is just totally new. So that must be a rotation of some kind. Oh, it's a closed form. Oh, I did 
the, the icons are very awkward and not very well chosen, but what they do is actually pretty neat. And maybe then I have to click on the selection tool and then to make it and I select it. So to get the idea, the auto is really working. This is my little Saturn. Once you quit, until you turn off the machine, it, there's a little Saturn that is in your night sky.